first time I met my uncle was when my father took me to see him at his hardware shop. He was cleaning his pipe with the pipe cleaners. He bent one into the shape of a spider and gave it to me. I thought it was great. A few months later, he retired after selling his one millionth nail. My uncle was married to my aunt. They never had any children, and so I became a sort of surrogate. In the evenings, my uncle would show me his History of War volumes, while my aunt made shell people for her Sunday craft store. And I remember a picture of a soldier being bayoneted through the throat, his helmet spilling off. My uncle said that in times of need, saucepans could double as helmets. When I was older, my aunt drank and poison and died, leaving my uncle with no one to talk to. He never remarried and said he never felt lonely because he had Reg, his chihuahua. Once when I visited, I found him talking to religious salesmen. He told me not to worry. He always invited them in because he enjoyed the friendly advice. He was very tolerant, although he hated snails. On winter mornings, he'd be down by the letterbox, removing them and crushing them with a brick. My uncle spent most of his retirement in his shed and backyard. He had a lemon tree he said was the best in the street because he'd wee on it every full moon. When it was grown, he put fairy lights in its branches. He also had an incinerator in which he enjoyed burning things. Once he ignited a tire, he'd soaked it with lawnmower fuel and when he lit it, the burst of flame singed his hair into little balls. He didn't eat very well. He thought a good meal was one he could shape into a smiley face. His favourite food was a crumpet, which he often had a battle with toasting. He'd complain it would either glide to the surface an hour later, lily white, or leap into flames onto the floor, be bashed with a broom, and scraped of its crumpet fur into the sink. I showed him the knob on the side, but he believed it wasn't connected to anything. Every Christmas we had him over for lunch. I always had to sit next to him and had to endure his rumbles coming from his colostomy bag. He'd dress up as Santa. He'd made the beard himself out of cotton wool and pipe cleaners. One year it fell to bits and he raced from the room. He returned and it was mended with band-aids. We pretended we really thought he was Santa. And one evening I found him in his shed. He'd been crying. I sat with him and he began to tell me things. <laughs> oh. You know, life can only be understood backwards but we have to live it forwards. Uh, most important things in life are simple pleasures, like a cup of tea in the morning, a hug before bedtime, growing a tree, and a friendly dog. One day my mother phoned to tell me that Reg had been run over by a kid on a skateboard and that my uncle had buried Reg under the lemon tree. He was never the same after that, and it wasn't long before they took him away, when my cousin had found him rolling on the floor with both legs in one pyjama trouser. He moved to the Ashburn Gentleman's Hospice, where he slowly got used to his bedmates. Thank you very much. As well as the mixed smell of flowers, roast dinners, and urine. I called in to see him a few times, bringing him a flask of whiskey to hide under his pillow. 
On one visit, I found him attaching a piece of string to his pyjamas, the other end to his false teeth. He said it was to stop other patients from stealing them. In the sunroom one morning, he died. The nurses found him with a cup of tea in one hand and a crumpet in the other. And his last words were to his religious friends who paid a visit. <laughs>